Today's chat is with a celebrity in the slow fashion movement, Jana Flood, or as you may know her, the ironic minimalist. She's a slow fashion stylist inspiring Australians to create a more conscious and stylish capsule wardrobe. She's got a lot of great tips and resources for you today. Enjoy the pod. So tell us a bit about Jenna and your journey to ironic minimalist today. Um, so I'm Jenna. I am a 31-year-old girl living in Brunswick. Um, cool. I'm from Tasmania originally. Um, I moved here, oh gosh, I don't know, maybe six, seven, eight years ago. I don't know now. Um, but yeah, ironic minimalist sort of started as a blog rather than a slow fashion stylist. And I just sort of thought I was really fashionable and wanted to show the world what I was wearing and it was sort of the era of bloggers so I was like oh I'm going to get on this train and um yeah it started as that and then I discovered minimalism and dug into the deep hole of everything that is minimalism like slow fashion um you know veganism zero waste sort of thing and then um yeah slow fashion really sort of hit the niche hit me like it made me realize where our clothing comes from and um I just sort of realized that there wasn't any stylists. I was starting to be a stylist at the same time and I realized there wasn't any other stylists that were doing the same thing. Okay. Um, So Ironic Minimalist sort of grew as a, um, yeah, as a stylist, sort of the slow fashion stylist and I kept the name because it sort of suited um, what I was doing still. Yeah. And, yeah, it just grew to be a stylist um, platform and a like a slow fashion movement platform where people could learn about slow fashion and different ways to sort of, you know, have a slower lifestyle and such. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. And in terms of you, so coming from Tasmania to Melbourne, was your sort of passion for fashion or even slow fashion in that matter, did that really um, sort of incubate in Melbourne or was it something that you always held those sort of values and, and beliefs before coming to Melbourne? I know people like to call Melbourne a bit of a fashion capital at times. <laughs> oh, no, I was a fast fashion shopper before I came to Melbourne and I was a fast fashion shopper when I was in Melbourne because okay. um, compared to Tasmania, Melbourne has so much more. Like where I lived in Tasmania was a 45-minute drive from um, one of the main cities. Okay. So I, like I didn't even have a McDonald's in my hometown. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so um, like coming here, I was hitting the DFOs like every single weekend and buying all the two for 20 deals. It, oh, wasn't, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't until about 2017 that I discovered the slow fashion movement. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So you'd always been a fashionista, but not necessarily in the yeah. slow fashion realm. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, looking back at some of my old Instagram posts, I was into lots of color and lots of pattern and like tight fitting clothes, definitely not the ones that I wear now. Yeah. Um, so it was really interesting to see how I've changed. And I guess that's everyone's journey as well. Our bodies change. Yeah. So we change our clothes as well. Yeah. Fantastic. And one thing I was just quick to ask you about also is that you do, um, some styling sessions I, I think you class them as you are yeah sort of an expert stylist can you chat a little bit more about the styling sessions you do with clients and I know you've mentioned to me recently you're doing virtual ones due to COVID I'd love to learn a bit more about that yeah so um I was originally doing in-house styling sessions with people so just helping them um sort of get a grasp on what their personal style is and how to develop it but also how to develop it in a slow fashion sort of sense so not um buying you know, a new outfit from Zara or whatever every single weekend, um, just learning to take it slower. So I was doing them in-house and I really enjoyed it. But then sort of COVID hit, so I had to sort of move it to more of an online platform. And while it's fine, it's not exactly the same. I I love being in someone's house and, you know, helping them with their clothes and putting together outfits and touching the Mm. fabrics and and being face-to-face with them. But um, my online sessions um, now... Um, the virtual wardrobe sessions are just more about uh, laying that platform, laying that sort of groundwork and educating people on how to, um, you know, build the capsule wardrobe and how to declutter their wardrobe and sort of to deal with the pieces that they've got now um, in a really environmentally friendly way instead of just throwing them out. They can donate them, they can mend them. It's really just setting that groundwork and providing as much information as I can for them to start their fashion journey since I can't hold their hand throughout the entire session. Mm. Um, I just want to try and help people that way. And then I sort of um, also provide like a little resources guide with, um, you know, tips on decluttering and such at the end of the session. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. And I'll include uh, links to your website and to the styling sessions in in the show notes. If anyone's interested, Um, that'll be in the show notes there. Um, You've briefly touched upon my next question, Jenna, and it is what inspired you to follow the slow fashion movement? Um, well, it was definitely the documentary Minimalism. Um, I don't know if it's still on Netflix, but 
I um, think it is. It's actually it in is. my list to watch. I, th- I uh, think so. I could it, be wrong. It's, it's uh, def- oh, it was in my list. Yeah? Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's so good. I watched it about three times that day. Like I watched it. I must have had a day off for work or something. And I don't know how I found it, but it just popped up and I watched it. And I was like, oh, my God, this makes so much sense to have less yeah. and not yeah. be full of clutter. Like I was the type of person that if I got a cool shopping bag, I'd keep the shopping bag because it just looked cool and I could oh, take okay. Instagram photos of it and stuff yeah. like that. So a little bit of a hoarder at times. Yeah, yeah. Like I wasn't a full on hoarder, but you know, I had yeah. a lot more stuff than I needed. Yeah. And yeah, I watched it and then I watched it again. And then my partner came home. I'm like, you have to watch this movie. <laughs> um, and then we watched it together and it just kept clicking and clicking every time I watched it. And then I just did my own research and just yeah, slow fashion sort of came from that. And I learned where my clothing is made. Um, learned about the Rhino Plaza accident and how many people were killed making our clothing, just things yeah. like that. And it just really clicked that um, if I want to wear something, then it yeah. should be made fairly and it shouldn't be made out of blood, sweat and tears and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fascinating. And just think that it is on Netflix, Minimalism. It is. Um, cool. Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a great documentary. And even like another cool doco that I'm, I'm sure you've watched is uh, The True Cost. Yeah, it used to be on Netflix. I think it's now on Amazon. Um, or yeah. there's, there's a few places, but that's another fantastic documentary. And that's probably one of the ones, um, from my point of view, that really, um, sort of tipped me over the edge. Because I think if you ask most people about sort of fashion, they wouldn't be naive to the fact that you know the human rights and environmental uh, destruction of it. But maybe a lot of people don't understand the extent of it. Mm. Um, but I think when you see the true cost, and I think that really sort of tipped me over the edge as I also transitioning from fast to slow fashion similar to what you did in your journey it was like seeing seeing like the people's eyes and seeing like the the real human side of it really just you, you just can't overlook that like you have to be a psychopath not to to feel their pain yeah um, yeah so that, that's another really cool documentary and yeah, you've, mentioned, you've mentioned that you've watched that too but i think minimalism um, also sounds fantastic and um Definitely links um, to what we're going to talk about later with the capsule wardrobes, which I know you're a huge advocate of. Yes. Um, and, yeah, I guess that, that documentary inspires you for your capsule wardrobe. And it's something that everyone's loving nowadays. Um, it's kind of in vogue. Um, what advice would you give to people who are just starting out their, their capsule wardrobes, maybe even their, even their slow fashion wardrobe for that matter? What are some sort of the main things you like to um, advise on? Um, well, a capsule wardrobe, like there are lists out there. Uh, uh, there are lists on the internet that sort of, you know, you have to have the little black dress and you have to have the whatever and the whatever. Um, I mm. think they're a great starting point. But if you're not someone who wears a little black dress, then don't go and buy a little black dress because you're not yeah. going to wear it. Um, mm. So I, I sort of started mine. Mine's not a perfect capsule wardrobe. I sort of refer to capture wardrobe I guess as a base wardrobe because you can build on it and that's where you start adding your fancy dressy pieces or your shiny um, Mm t-shirts or whatever but to me a capture wardrobe is something that's like you know your t-shirt your pants um, your jumpsuit or dress and jacket and they're all usually in quite a neutral color that you can work back um, like you know reds or blues or something with if you wear a lot of color you can work those colors back to it yeah and it just makes it easier when you're standing in front of your wardrobe going what do I wear you can pull that one piece and be like right this is a black pair of pants I know I can wear a white top with it today I feel more colorful so I'll wear you know a blue top with it or whatever yeah like it's just providing that base for you so you don't have the I don't have nothing to wear moment Um, and I think with starting out you should just take it slow um really sort of develop find out your sense of style and I think it's best to work with what you already have so instead of throwing out everything you own and building a new capsule wardrobe with buying new pieces just go through your wardrobe identify your hero pieces and then the pieces you wear the most and the pieces you love and the pieces you just save if your house was on fire sort of thing yeah um and put that that's the start of your capsule wardrobe so put the ones you don't wear you know aside in a box somewhere else and as you sort of start to use your wardrobe and see the pieces that you use the most, sort of catalogue it, write it down, take some photos, and then you see that they develop a sort of pattern. So you're yep. like, okay, I always wear the stripy tee. That's my signature style sort of thing. And yep. then you can identify gaps. So you're like, I've got this stripy tee and I love it, but I always feel uncomfortable wearing it with these pants. It doesn't feel right or these pants aren't my size anymore, that sort of thing. And okay. then you can you know that you need a new pair of pants. So you can look yep. for a sustainable alternative, second hand or, you know, from a brand. But it's just about yep. building a wardrobe that works for your lifestyle and not building yeah. a wardrobe that works for 
your favorite celebrity's lifestyle because that's not your lifestyle. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point there. And I really liked how intrinsic um, your analysis is in, in auditing, yeah, like your wardrobe, not, you know, yeah, that famous celebrity. Yeah. Um, I think, like, and even that great point you said before about people who feel they need to buy that little black dress, but they don't buy little black dresses, then it, it defeats the purpose of having a capsule wardrobe or a slow fashion wardrobe. Like, exactly. Yeah. I, it's, it sounds so obvious, but it's yeah. so true, and not a lot of people probably abide by it. And sometimes the best piece of advice is the most obvious one. So, yeah, yeah, thank, yeah. thanks so much for that, that great advice. And sort of moving on to now second hand September, which you know currently in the midst of, like we're recording on the third of September. Um, so um, I'd just like to ask you about sort of where people should look to to shop second hand and really embrace second hand September, not just in September, but you know throughout their fashion consumption. Um, well, I know in Melbourne, most of the shops, secondhand shops are closed, unfortunately. Um, soon, hopefully, they will reopen and we can get back to it, into it. Um, but there are still a lot of op shops online, actually. So Salvo's um, has an online store. I think um, Sacred Heart has an online eBay store. Yeah. Also, maybe the Brotherhood of St. Lawrence have one too, or maybe they just have books. I can't quite remember. Yeah. Um, but I obviously work at Mutual Muse and we are selling our clothing on Instagram. Okay. So, you know, that's a great place to start. It's just Mutual Muse shop um, on yep. Instagram or Mutual Muse um, on Instagram. And we sell via both, the, via both those accounts, one on stories and one on the main grid. So, you know, that's a great um, place to sort of dip your toe into secondhand as everything's curated. Um, we, you know, check the stains and it's only sort of the best of the best that make it onto the Instagram platform. Um, yeah. But I think also with secondhand shopping is not to get too carried away because, you know, things can be cheap and they look amazing, but really take your time to sort of think about what you do actually need before you do jump into buying something, uh, whether it be brand new or secondhand. Um, yeah, I, I often, like when the op shops were open, I would go a lot and buy a lot of things because it was cheap or it was shiny or sparkly or I was like, oh, I, maybe I could use it in a photo shoot. But yeah. I ended up just donating it back because I never used it. So okay. it, was, it was excess clutter. Yeah. Um, even so, with secondhand shopping, you've got to be careful. Yeah, definitely. So would you advise having a bit of a list? Because I don't know the same thing has to do with groceries sometimes. But, you know, mm. If you go grocery shopping and you're hungry, you end up buying half the, half the supermarket. Um, so yes <laughs> yeah so is that something you would advise too because i know sometimes op shopping it's, it can be a bit of a lucky dip um because you're not always 100 percent certain what will be there so you know would a list be sort of a good comp you know good way to combat that yeah definitely um i have like a um pinterest list on my phone of sort of styles that i'd like to try out and if okay. i happen to see them in the op shop i'll try them on but um i also know what my style is so if i want something say the turtleneck Yep. Um, then I look along the rail for the turtleneck sticking out so I know yep. I can sort of cut my shopping time in half and know exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, so once you get to know your style, it becomes a little bit easier to shop secondhand. Yeah. But um, you can also do it with your colours. So if you really um, don't like to wear yellow, then sort of skip the yellow section and go straight for the, you know, the black sort of section or, okay. you know, um, some op shops are sort of, organized by short sleeve or long sleeve sort of thing. So it makes it a little bit easier. Just yeah. find the way you like to shop, um, stick to your list and, you know, take it slow. Don't be rushed. But yeah. in saying that some of my most amazing finds have been when I've gone in like 20 minutes before closing and I'm looking for nothing and I find the most amazing things. So yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a secondhand ways. shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned some cool tips to look out for in sort of finding the, the right piece of clothing and op shop. Is there any other piece of advice you did, like maybe how to best inspect the garment, how to sort of just make sure you're buying a quality secondhand garment? Do you have any little little tips that you always look at the label, you always look at the sleeve, or is any anything else along those lines to help find quality secondhand clothing? Yeah, so um, I always look at the stitching yep. um, to make sure you can tell when it's a fast fashion garment, even if, even if you don't know the brand, the stitching will sort of curl up and the hem where it's meant to be flat will curl up as well. Okay. Um, so it's sort of worth knowing your brand as well. So, you know, you don't need to go to the deep end and like think about Gucci and Acne, but it's just worth knowing um, the brands that charge a little bit more, how their stitching lays and how their garments are put together. Yeah. Um, and then also looking at the fabrics. So if you pick up a nice top and it's really cool, but it's made of polyester, um, I mean, 
you mean like you can still wear it that's fine but it'll be something that sort of is not comfortable to wear in the heat because yep. polyester doesn't breathe yeah. Um, but in saying that, there's so many amazing vintage pieces made from polyester. So, yeah. you know, it's a, it depends what your sort of era you're shopping. Um, yeah. I, you can also look, you know, if you want to wear wool and silks and leathers, you can usually, it's usually best to buy them secondhand. Yeah. Um, and you can always get those amazing sort of biker jacket styles that fast fashion stores are always trying to replicate, but they're not just quite right. Yeah. Um, and you can get, you know, your cozy woolen knits. I think it's better to buy animal fibers secondhand, honestly. But okay. always, you know, look for holes because, you know, um, most of the reason things are donated is because of holes that people yeah. don't bother to fix. And if you're handy with a needle, you can fix them instantly and you've got like a mm. one-off jumper. So Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, some great advice. And I think myself and a lot of people are going to be taking that all on board. So, yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so moving on, you semi touched on it before about sort of mending clothes and looking out for holes, but, um, you know, really important aspect of slow fashion is extending the life of our clothes. And a lot of us are doing that by mending and for people who are quite new to mending or fixing their clothes or repairing in any way. Um, can you share some cool resources, yeah, some cool resources on mending clothes? Yeah. Um, I'm not the greatest mender, to be honest. I can mend a little bit. Um, yeah. but one of my friends, um, Erin, Fitzgerald, I think it's Lewis. She okay. um, recently wrote a book um, called Modern Mending. And okay. she talks, it's Erin Lewis Fitzgerald, sorry. Yeah. Her name backwards. <laughs> yeah. nice um, but Erin, she is absolutely amazing. And she wrote a whole book on mending and it covers everything from, you know, tiny little holes in knitwear to the bigger holes that always happen in, in jeans at the butt. You know, those holes that always appear. <laughs> Worst possible place. Oh, yes, the worst place. But she is absolutely amazing and will show you how to mend anything. Um, it's more of a visible mending technique. So you might have a cute little heart um, on your sweater, but you can also take the invisible mending route. Um, it just depends on the, you know, the hole and the fabric and everything. While I'm not an expert, I think it's fantastic to sort of dabble in mending and it prolongs the life of our clothing. I mean, yeah. why would you want to throw out your favorite shirt but just because a button's missing? It's so mm. easy to fix. Yeah, spot yeah. on. Yeah, that's a great point there. And I'll have to include, it's Erin Lewis Fitzgerald, correct? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay, I'll, we'll have to get that link for the show notes again. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, I think that'll be a great resource for a lot of people to learn from. And she sounds like an absolutely amazing oh, um, she is. person <laughs> in this space. So I'm sure people would love to learn more about her. Well, can um, I do a quick plug, Jordan? Yeah, go for it. Um, I haven't posted on my Instagram yet, but I'm actually having an event with Erin. Yeah. Um, awesome. I will pass on the details for your show notes. But yeah, we're having yeah. an event and we're going to talk everything about slow fashion. Um, it's with the Darabin Council, and Erin will be talking about her mending skills and different ways to mend garments. So that'll be okay. worth um tuning into that'll when we be, post yeah, that. That'll be awesome. And roughly when is that going to be uh, live? I think it's the tenth um of September from memory. Okay. Awesome. And that'll be obviously via Zoom. I think so. I haven't actually um, looked at the um, details of it yet. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but, yeah, it would um, definitely be an event where you can buy tickets. I'm going to post okay. it on my Instagram soon and we can put it in yeah. the show notes for you. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'd love to do that. And I'm always happy to plug uh, slow fashion. So, you know, no, no need to ask. Just go for it. Um, and then just the, to wrap up, you know, it's been a great chat so far, but are there any sort of last words of advice or inspiration You'd love to give this and go any way you want, you know. It can be a real inspirational quote or or hack that, you know, just uh, any golden nuggets you can sort of finish off the, this great chat with. Oh, gosh, there's so many things I could say. I could talk yeah. about slow fashion forever. Yeah, no um, pressure, though. No pressure. <laughs> but I do think um, when people are talking about slow fashion or sustainable fashion, they do need to remember that not everyone can afford to buy a sustainable from a sustainable mm. brand. Yeah. So even if you can't, you know, be buying from a sustainable brand, sustainable brand every time you shop. Don't beat yourself up about it. Just, yeah. just think about how you're going to treat the garment. Um, so basically, when you buy a garment, you're taking care of it for its entire life. So how will you wash it? How will you care for it? Will you mend it when it gets broken? How will you pass it on? So it's worth really thinking about um, 
how often you buy your garments and if you're willing to care for them for the long term. Almost like yeah. buying a, a pet in a way. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to yeah. care for it forever. So yeah. don't, don't beat yourself up if you have to buy from a fast fashion brand. But if you are a person who does buy from a fast fashion brand a lot, consider writing them an email and asking them more about their processes and how they make their clothing. Um, consider saying that you really love their whatever range or you really like the way their T-shirts are. But just sort of say you're not a fan of them using, you know, how they're not paying their workers correctly. Just put it yeah. out there because I, yeah. brands do listen yeah. um, and we do need to push them to make a change. So I do yeah. really think that if we started doing little things like this, the brands yeah. would change. Yeah. yeah, no, without a doubt. And I think it's sort of a great point I'd love to touch on there is about progress is better than perfection. Mm. So we really need to um, lower that bar for entering slow fashion. Some people think they need to buy from, you know, ethical and sustainable brands that are, that are perfect and, you know, they're B Corp certified, all that stuff. But I think it's really important to, yeah, just start so you don't have to be the perfect – because no one's a perfect consumer at the end of the day. So um, just, yeah, like I said before, people don't beat yourself up about it. Just, you know, if you are sometimes buying from a sustainable brand, fantastic, but sometimes you're not, that's okay. No one especially to be perfect. And in terms of cost, which is a really important factor, that's where I think op shopping is a really great alternative um, that you can still buy – great fashion um that you you know you're preventing it from going to landfill and it's often at a um, at, at a reduced cost so um mm. i think that's i think that's a re- really great point um to exactly. end on there and yeah, anything else you'd love to add i think i've just kind of hijacked your no your no comment. no that was perfect um we just need people to be more aware of what they're buying and you know buy secondhand buy sustainable buy local mm. yeah but buy less <laughs> basically yeah, nah. yeah without a doubt and, and that's what your whole movement's about the slow fashion and uh, movement there and with your styling and whatnot but um jenna a huge huge thank you um for your fantastic insights today um are we putting all those resources and links and the extra information you shared in the show notes because it can be a little bit hard to keep up you know people are driving or, or walking so i'd sort of write it all down but um yeah once again a huge thank you for your time and we wish you all the best thank you very much for having me on uh- uh- thank you so much for listening it really does mean the world if you like what you heard, please leave a nice review. And if you have any feedback or want to recommend a guest, and yes, that can include you love yourself, please email me at jordan at stridestore.com.au.